are done with conditional statements now we'll go ahead to the looping statements so again uh, during the when we were learning about what exactly is programming we understood the concept of looping so there are many a times where we'd want to repeat a certain task and that is where we'd require looping statements so we had seen this example where we had to fill up a bucket and to fill up that bucket we had to take a mug of water and keep pouring that mug of water until this bucket is full so the condition is while this bucket is not full we will keep on repeating the same task so this is how the while loop works so we'll start by working with the while loop so first we will enter the loop and then we'll check the condition so if the condition is evaluated to true then we'll execute whatever is present inside the body of the while loop and we'll go back again we'll check if the while loop or the condition is evaluated to true so again if it is true we'll execute the body and then we'll head back so this process repeats until the text expression is evaluated to false and once the text expression is evaluated to false we will exit the while loop and this is the syntax for it so we'll type in the keyword while and then we'll give in a condition and until the condition is true we will execute all of these statements so now we'll go to jupyter notebook and work with the while loop so now i want to repeat the first 10 numbers using the while loop so for this I'll go ahead and initialize the variable i and I'll set the value to be equal to 1. Now, once this is done, I will start the while loop and I will give this condition while i is less than or equal to 10. I would have to put in a colon over here and I would have to print the value of i. So print of i and once this is done, I would have to go ahead and increment the value of i. So this will become i is equal to i plus 1. Let's understand this. Initially value of i is equal to 1 and we are checking if i is less than or equal to 10. This means is 1 is less than or equal to 10. So the condition is true. We'll print the value of i which is 1. Now after that we'll increment the value of i and it becomes 2. Right? So then we'll check if 2 is less than or equal to 10. This again evaluates to true, we'll print 2. After that, we'll increment the value of 2 with 1, then it becomes 3. Then we'll check if 3 is less than or equal to 10. Again, we'll come down, we'll print 3, right? So this goes on until i's value becomes 11. That is when it will be evaluated to false, right? So when i value becomes 11, this condition fails. So 11 is 11 less than or equal to 10. Obviously, no, 11 is greater than 10. That is when this will evaluate to false and then will come out of the loop, right? So this is how we are able to print the first 10 numbers using while loop. So similarly, I want to print out the two table using the while loop. So 2 cross 1 equals 2, 2 cross 2 equals 4. So it has to go on till the first 10 numbers. So again, I'll take i and I'll initialize it to be equal to 1. Then I'll have n and I'll initialize it to be equal to 2. So I've got these two ready. Now I will start my while loop. So again, the condition will be the same. While i is less than or equal to 10. Now inside this, what I'll do is I will go ahead and print out the result. So while i is less than or equal to 10, I would have to print so it is basically 2 cross 1 so that will be let me put in so here it will be n uh, let me put in a comma so n cross and then i'll put in a comma again over here so this time it will be i so n cross i will be equal to let me give in a space over here and then it will be equal to n cross i now after that i will update the value of i so i equals i plus one now i will print this out and let's see what is the result right so let's understand this so initially i's value is equal to one which is less than or equal to 10. now this is true we'll enter the body of file and we'll print this out so n into i so n is 2 so 2 into 1 will be equal to 2 then i's value is incremented it becomes 2 so here this is again true so 2 into 2 is 4 then it is 2 into 3 is 6 2 into 4 is 8 2 into 5 is 10 and we'll go on till i's value becomes 10 right 
So this is how we can print out the two table with the while loop. Now let's see how can we use the while loop with the list. So let's say if I want to print out uh, all the elements in a list or if I want to update all the elements in a list with the help of the while loop. So let's do this. I'll create this list first. I'll name this list to be equal to L1 and I'll give in some values. So the values in this list would be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So I've got these values ready over here. So now that this is done, let me start my while loop. So I will type in while and then I'll just type in. So I'll also have to give in the i value over here. I'll set i to be equal to 0. So while i is less than length of L1. So I just have to keep on incrementing the values of this. So L1 of i would be equal to L1 of i plus 100. And then again, I'd have to increment the value of i. So i equals i plus 1. And let's see what is the result over here. So I would actually have to print out the uh, statements over here. So let me just put in L1 and let's see what do we get, right? So what is happening is initially the value of i is equal to 0. So I'm checking. So what is the length of this list? So this length of the list would be equal to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 0 less than 5, it is true. So L1 of 0 equals L1 of 0 plus 100. So to this element, I am adding 100. So 1 plus 100 becomes 101. And that is what we have. After that, we'll increment the value of i. Now we are checking if 1 is less than 5, which is again true. So L1 of 1 equals L1 of 1 plus 100. So 2 plus 100 becomes 102. Similarly, the i's value is incremented. It becomes 2 over here. So L1 of 2 equals L1 of 2 plus 100, which is basically 3 plus 100 and it becomes 103, right? So this goes on until i's value becomes 5. And when it is equal to 5, we will come out of this while loop. So we are done with while loop as well. Now it's time to work with the for loop. So for loop is used to iterate over a sequence. Now sequences basically are data structures. So you got tuple, list, dictionary, string and so on. So for loop, with the help of for loop, you can iterate over a sequence. And this what you see is the syntax of a for loop. So you'll type for while in sequence. So for is your keyword and whatever value is there in the sequence and until the sequence does not end, you will execute the body of this for loop. So let's go to Jupyter Notebook and work with some examples. Now we'll create a list and then we'll iterate the elements of the list through the for loop. So L1 equals and uh, let me just add in some fruits over here. So I've got apple and then I've got a banana. After banana, I've got an orange. So I've got these three over here. Now with the help of the for loop, I want to iterate this list. So for, and then I'll have a variable over here. So for i n l1, I just want to print out the value of i. So this is what is happening. Now this for loop starts and initially apple is stored in i and I print it out. Then we'll update i. So i's value has banana now. We'll print it out. And finally, I will have orange stored in it. And again, I'm printing it out. So once the sequence ends, we will come out of this for loop. Now uh, we'll work with nested for loop. So let's say I've got two lists over here. So I've got one list, which would comprise of, um, let's say different colors. So I've got orange, then I've got blue. And then I've got green. So this is L1. Now after that, I've got L2. So I've got different objects. So let's say I've got a book over here. Then I've got a chair. Then I've got a phone. Now I want to iterate through the first list. And then I want to iterate through the second list. So basically the idea is I want to print orange book, orange chair, orange phone, then blue book, blue chair, blue phone, then green book, green chair, green phone. 
So let's do this. So for this, I'd have to create a nested for loop. So I'll type in for i in L1. This is my outer for loop over here. I'll give in colon and then I'll type out for j in L2. Again, I'll give in a colon over here and I'd have to print out i comma j and let's see the result, right? And this is what we have. So for i in L1, so initially i's value is orange, then we'll enter the inner for loop, then we'll have j. So j's values will go from book, chair and phone. So it'll be orange book, orange chair and orange phone. Now once the inner loop is also done, we'll go back to the outer loop and i becomes blue. So this time we'll have blue book, blue chair and blue phone. Then after that, i's value is again incremented, it becomes green. So then we have green book, green chair and green phone. So this is how we can work with the for loop.